in the Ontario area, so Inland Empire. And again, that's another major really, really close to basically this one coming up. Even though MSM 240 is a local, I'm pretty sure it's going to be a regional or major. Yeah. Interesting. In, in Hawaii. Hawaii. Okay. So on the right, we have Andy, number five PR in Hawaii. I believe he plays Steve, from what I've seen, among other characters. So should be interesting to see what he's capable of in this part of the bracket. Ooh, fun, fun fact, actually. Uh, the Hawaiian scene, really, really sleeper. They're really good. I've played against their number 10 PR at the time, Maverick, in Smash 4. He was a Fox player. And overall, their skill rivals that, in my opinion, of the top 10, top 15 of SoCal. That's how good they are. They just, you know, can't make it out to a lot of outside locals because they need a plane ticket to just go to SoCal or a boat. Absolutely. A lot of people just know GSM as, oh, that one crew that Void came out of. But there's yeah. so much more than that. There's so much talent top to bottom in that one region. And just because they're so geographically isolated from the rest of the continental U.S., really don't get a chance to showcase it much. I feel like if you are from a region that is extremely geographically isolated or self-isolated, you develop a different tactic of how to play the game. You develop a different meta. And that's actually where we see a lot of different scenes. So SoCal plays extremely different from East Coast, mm -hmm. which plays so super different from Japan, who plays super different from NorCal. But this is actually the first time I think I'm seeing a Hawaiian player play Smash Ultimate. Yeah, this will be interesting for sure. It's a DLC battle as we have Steve and Sephiroth duking it out on PS2. I would say the whole game plan is to, yeah, use the minecart to, say, have a get off me type of option, to have a burst option, and just sit there and mine. Build up the two blocks, can't do anything about it, and just keep getting resources. What do you think about this matchup? Yeah, it's particularly interesting. We're going to have to see how good Andy's use of blocks is and his get-off-me options, because if you can get in the middle, Sephiroth does have that long range, but he does need to at least make somewhat of an approach to use it if he's not going to use those slow fireballs. Sad has been really struggling against the minecart in particular, always getting command grab, but it's really a 50-50 type of mix-up in my opinion, just because if you're so close, they could instantly jump and that could be a command grab, or they could just wait and hit you with it, you know? Close range of fireball. Andy just going to beat it out with dash attack. You know, Diamond Sword finally coming out from Andy and trying to get him with the, another burst option minecart and a dash attack taking it. Wow, that's... Yeah, it's Sephiroth, one of those unexpectedly light characters at 77 weight units. I would say the one thing would be to try to always keep Steve in disadvantage as much as possible because the only things that they really have to get out is down air, which, you know, can kill, and really minecart. Other than that, their frame data, especially for air dodging and movement-wise in the air, really, really bad. And both down air and minecart use iron as a resource. So if you can drain that resource beforehand, keep the pressure on, make him use those a few times before, then leave him with no escape buttons. Mm -hmm. We saw over here before a Steve player making it over, all the way over to top eight using that very infamous F move. <laughs> yes. So I really want to see if there's anything really similar. But look at that chase down right after the minecart. That's really, really scary just because not a lot of people know when it becomes a grab or when it's still a hitbox. Oh, and just force the error there. Errant recovery from side's part. Yeah, I would say the main thing to deal with two blocks is very character dependent. Some characters could jump over it really well. Some characters could really hit two moves really, really fast and get through it. But some characters really actually can't do much. They might just need to sit down there, charge their charge shot or anything. And I really feel like Side really needs to figure that out as fast as possible. Yeah, and unlike Steve, Sephiroth doesn't have a resource that he can charge and hold on to, so really can't do much on his own out the corner. Great grab, get him off stage. Trying to wait for the minecart too. Good use of the jab, Sephiroth's quickest ground adoption. That's really smart. And look at Andy's uh, resources, actually. There's no iron left. So that's really good to keep track of. He has a diamond. And you can see right there, right after they run out of resources, my, uh, Steve's really like to try to make as much space as possible. Once you're past that two-block area, 
that's when they're going to try to unreactable dash attack or do anything against you, right? Oh, that could be trouble. Fantastic forward tilt, though. 132, Side's not out of this just yet. Uh, he's out of this just now. <laughs> no sooner do you say it. Unexpected use of the anvil there. We didn't see Andy go for it over and over again. It wasn't predictable at any point. He got it when he needed to. Mm -hmm. I would say Anvil is a really good get out of jail free card for the first few times. Mm -hmm. And after people keep seeing that, it gets very, very predictable because what Sephiroth could do is he could counter it. And because that counter goes on a really, really high scaling due to damage and knockback, that could basically kill, that could basically kill Steve, you know, sub 40% sometimes, yeah. depending on how high they are. Yeah, at center stage, maybe a bit more, maybe around 50, 60, but you definitely don't have much room to work with. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's fantastic, just throwing it out there. You know what? I'm going to hit you with that anvil. I just got enough iron back for like two moves. I'm going to hit you with that. For sure. Yeah, what, what do you suppose that uh, Sephiroth's supposed to do? It looks pretty hard. It is. You do need to be very, very careful with your jumping habits in the first place, because if he's using those two while you're still descending, particularly if you're using the end lag from an aerial, you have to go through all of that. Steve, by that time, is already halfway to the edge of the stage, mining away. You have to go through, jump over again, and even then you have to pick an approach option. Yeah, yeah. So here's, here's my theory. So when Steve creates the option of having two blocks and then him, and you're on the other side, once you jump over, it's either he's going to sit down and keep mining, and then when you touch the ground, he's either going to run at you and dash attack or side B, or he's either going to shield, or he could do the vice versa. If he's really close to the two blocks and you jump over, he's going to try to rising back air you because you're not going to react to it in time, which is really, really good for Steve, but at the same time, if he pulls that trigger way too fast or you know way too slow, he's going to get hit. Yeah. So I feel like side really needs to play with with that. So see right there, he was able to just wait with Punish when he lands with a uh, with an up throw. Yeah, those Iron Jewels are going to cost him advantage state, though. Ooh, untip dash tag, but it's all right. Off Which, to slash. Oh, that could have been punishable. It's, it's really hard. Steve doesn't have the best movement. And since it didn't break the blocks, Steve actually couldn't really do anything, you know? Yeah, the most you probably could have hoped for is Minecart, which would have covered both shield and just do nothing. But Ooh, does he hit, oh! get hit by the TNT? The slowest Minecart ever, baby. He jumped out just in time, so only getting caught with the edge of that radius there. That was extremely tricky movement. The TNT slowed down his you know, descent, and boom, hit him with that pickaxe. Sides up smash will even up the score, though. Oh, the, the hit grab, it's so hard to deal with. Fantastic, just waiting in shield, trying to get him to do a, you know, an option. Very punishable. Caught in minecart again, and this time with all the resources he needs, so can just go to the ledge and challenge himself. But you could kind of see Steve playing very, very nicely. And he doesn't really need to sit and wait and farm for all these different tools. All he just needs uh -oh. to do is ledge trap over and over and over again, because he has everything. He has the gold. He has the pickaxe, he has the diamonds, you know? He has enough iron to do any move that he wants. Yeah, very risky there that time, the strong hitbox of the minecart. Oh, just driving through that small space in between the blocks. Shooting the gap himself, going above that down smash attempt. And you can kind of see that Andy doesn't really have any resources, so this is the cue for Sephiroth to really go in to do a lot of damage. But nothing just yet. Just reading with the down smash, nothing just yet. Back throw, center stage. Off the slash provides him with a slight delay, but oh yeah. Oh yeah, that's what I've been talking about. You could just counter it and then it just he goes flying. But getting caught over and over again by these grabs, I feel what Andy could go for is he could go for a minecart grab into forward air off the ledge for a spike or, you know, just death. TNT setups, just waiting, mining his own business, oh. and hitting him with the minecart again, baby. 
very, very nice coverage there from Andy, just catching the roll at the end. And a few times, you know, those options didn't even happen.